You people are hating on this Toronto Raptors team. I have seen some comments, you know, this team is so mid, they're not going to get out of the first round of the playoffs, even if they do make the playoffs. All right, well, maybe you just need to be a little bit more appreciative because us Hornets fans would love to be able to make the playoffs. With Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, they got a great duo. Also got Scotty Barnes there, a good young trio that you can build around for the next five years. This offseason was a really good starting point. You got Grady Dick, uh, number 13 overall, great value pick. Bring back Jakob Pertl, Gary Trent Jr., uh, bring in Dennis Scrotum from the LA Lakers, and you bring in Jalen McDaniels, two elite defenders there, and McDaniels shoots at 40% from three. We'll talk about that later in the video, though. So I think the Raptors, they could be pretty good this year, maybe even sneak out of the first round. Make sure to like button though, make sure to leave me a comment down below if you do enjoy today's video as well, sticking around to the end. Um, also make sure to that subscribe button because as you can see here, a lot of y'all are not subscribed to the channel. Uh, it'd mean a lot to me if you could subscribe, turn on that bell. Anyways, let's get started here. Looking at the great moves that they made so far this offseason, and, and it starts with Grady Dick, the number 13 overall pick in the class, the best shooter in the draft, and like I said, I love this pick here. Um, Average 14 points per game, 5 rebounds last year at Kansas. But he, he's more than just a pure scorer. He provides defensive upside because he's 6'9", six 6'8", foot six foot something like that, and can really... Grady Dick, 6'9". 44% from the field, 40% from three, 86% from the free throw line. Just an elite shooter. Everything about that screams elite shooter. Um, so, yeah, I guess he's technically listed at 6'8". It'd be cooler if he was listed at 6'9". But... Yeah, Grady Dick, much more than, like I said, a spot-up shooter. He can score from all three levels. He really showcased us that in the Summer League. Um, you know, hey, let's overreact to the Summer League a little bit. But Grady Dick, I think, is going to be a very good piece for them next year, you know, immediately uh, contributing. Now, they also add in a couple of great defenders with Dennis Schroeder and Jalen McDaniels. We'll talk about Dennis Schroeder first. Last year, he averaged 12.6 points, 4.5 assists, and 2.5 rebounds for the Los Angeles Lakers, again, a team that made it to the Western Conference Finals, where they were swept promptly by Nikola Jokic, the horseman, and his um, Denver Nuggets. 42% from the field, 33% from three, and one steal for Dennis Schroeder this season. So he provides, you know, he's a nice guard to have um, good defense on the ball, Nice point of attack defender, so he, he's a nice solid piece to have, and I think he fits in very well. You know, would you rather pay Dennis Schroeder two years, twenty six million, or Fred Van Vliet three years, one hundred and thirty million, while you have the number four overall pick sitting on the bench? Don't know what Houston's doing, but um, Dennis is now Dennis the Menace is north of the border. Um, now Jalen McDaniels, I think, is a guy that is still raw and can still be developed. Ten point six points, four point eight rebounds. To assist, still wish the Hornets would have kept him. I mean, he, you know, he's a great NBA role player in this day and age because, for what we're about to talk about, I mean, he shoots the three ball at a 40% clip and he scores it at a 50% clip with about 1.2 steals per game. Another guy that's about six foot nine, six foot ten, with a really, really good wingspan, really good um, defender. Again, six foot nine. So they bring in the six foot nine Jalen McDaniel, six foot eight Grady Dick. You love the length and the athleticism that they bring in there with those two picks, um, or with the Grady Dick pick, and then, the, oh my, I said it again, dang it. All right, we're going to we're gonna go ahead and move on here to the re-signings, where Jakob Pertl, four years, $80 million, you know, long term. They got their guy, and he's going to be here for a while. 13 points a game, nine rebounds, 2.2 assists, solid center down in the paint, um, you know, those those big guys coming to premium nowadays, there's not that many of them that are seven foot with ball skills. Um, so, you know, you got to pay up for them. 1.2 steals, 1.3 blocks, 65% from the field. You know, when you think of Yaka Pirtle, you don't exactly scream rim protector, um, but 1.3 blocks is definitely serviceable. Um, Yaka Pirtle will be, in my opinion, the starting center here for the next four years at least. You know, they draft him and then they trade him and then they trade back for him and then they resign him. A lot of history here going on between Yaka Pirtle and the Raptors. And then Gary Trent Jr. Um, opts in to his $18 million player option. Probably a smart idea. Don't know if he could have gotten $18 million on the open market. Probably could have gotten close for sure. And we're talking about a guy that averaged 17.5 points, 2.6 rebounds, 1.6 assists. And he was a very good defender. Um, offensively, he really just scores the ball. Doesn't do too much else in terms of like setting up teammates or anything. 
but 43% from the field, 35% from three, and 1.6 steals per game. You know, very solid, like we said, very solid defender. Um, one of the more underrated defenders in the NBA, I'd say. But at 25 years old, I think he's going to be a Raptor for a good while. Well, I mean, like I said, I don't think they should blow this team up. they got lots of young talent. Siakam at 27, OG at 25, Scotty Barnes going into his third year. Um, lots of young talent here. Gary Trent Jr., 25. Lots of young talent in Toronto. Jakob Pertl still youngish. Um, Schroeder's not old, neither is Jalen McDaniels. Now, the star duo. You know, some people got mad that I didn't put Scotty Barnes in this, but these are the two guys that are kind of in the rumor mill right now. OG Ananobi, 17 points per game and about five rebounds. He's one of my guys. I mean, we, we talk about OG every single year on this channel. He just continues to get better and better. 48% from the field, 39% from three. One of, you know, a premium type build in the NBA. That six foot eight can score it, can shoot it, can play defense. Two steals a game, two assists. Everybody wants a little bit of OG. I believe the... Grizzlies even offered like four first round picks for OG at the deadline. Maybe that was for McCall Bridges. But either way, I mean, you can see how valuable that build is in the modern NBA. And then Pascal, 24 points and about eight rebounds a game. He was a stud last year after coming back from injury. 48% from the field, 33% from three. Really like what Pascal is doing in Toronto. Um, you know, both sides of the ball as well. 5.8 assists, 28 years old. Very, very solid guy there for the Raptors. I, I don't think they should trade him. I think he is their franchise. Um, if you lose both Van Vliet and Siakam in the same offseason, not only are you rebuilding, also you probably lose a lot of fans up in Canada. This is, in my opinion, what the starting point guard or starting rotation should look like. With Scotty at the one, I know some people don't think he can run the one. He ran the one in college. Um, I think, you know, he can be serviceable enough to play the point guard spot. Pascal, also a solid enough passer to be, you know, a point forward. We see him bring the ball up all the time. Maybe it's just point guard by committee. You know, maybe Gary Trent Jr. and OG even start bringing the ball up. Heck, we might even see Yaka Pertle bringing the ball up the court. But Raptors fans or just NBA fans in general, you can chip in your two cents down below. Would you rather have Scotty Barnes run the point? Or would you rather have Dennis Schroeder at the point and put one of these five guys coming off the bench? Speaking of the bench, um, it's very solid. I love this bench unit. This Raptors team is very deep. I, I like this team. This is a team that should be a top six team in the Eastern Conference, in my opinion. Um, very solid bench. You've got defense with Schroeder, with McDaniels, with Achua, even with Boucher. Very, very good defenders. And then you also have a really, really good, two really, really good shooters with Grady Dick, Jalen McDaniels. Schroeder can be the facilitator. They don't really have that true score, that go-to option. So maybe that's what I'm saying. Maybe you can bring like a Gary Trent Jr. in off the bench and be a knockdown shooter. But then you don't have a backup point guard really either. Um, we'll see how they do it. Uh, of course, a new coach up in Toronto as well. Nick Nurse got the boot. So we'll see what happens. Um, but like I said, this is a Toronto team. I don't think they need to rebuild. They don't need to trade Pascal. You know, Pascal's a, a type of guy that only comes around once in a while in the draft, especially where they got him at. Um, <laughs> you don't find that at 27 in the NBA anymore. But I feel like this Raptors team, they need to stick with what they got. They still got a few years left. They still got a very, very long window to rebuild. Maybe even if they get another lottery pick next year. Um, or maybe they can make some noise in free agency after saving $130 bucks by not going out and keeping Van Vliet. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Make sure to like button and hit the subscribe button if you made it this far into the video, because obviously you liked something. And with that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.